This video was made possible by Squarespace. Whether you need a domain, online store, or personal website, make it with Squarespace. During the first and second centuries AD, four great states, the Roman, Han Chinese, Arsacid, and Kushan empires connected east and west, the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans. In addition to gold, silver, silk, and a wide variety of other luxury resources, ideas, philosophy, and religion was also exchanged between East and West. For over a century, a well-maintained and protected road also connected the Indian subcontinent to China, during which time the first Buddhist missionaries are believed to have arrived in China from the Kushan Empire. The Kushans maintained diplomatic relations with Rome, China, Aksumite Ethiopia, Arsacid Parthians, and later Sassanid Persians, and likely a host of smaller kingdoms, principalities, and tribes. The Kushan Empire was founded by the UZ Confederation of Nomadic Tribes. There are several theories about the origins of the UZ. One theory is that they were an Iranian-speaking people group, distantly related to the Scythians or Parthians. Another theory has them related to the settled ancient peoples of the Tarim Basin, who have been called the Tocharians in modern times based off of the belief that they were related to the Tokhari, a people briefly mentioned in Greek and Roman sources as having moved into and inhabiting Bactria after the fall of the Greco-Bactrian kingdom, which was established after the conquests of Alexander of Macedon. The link between the Tocharians and the Tokhari has largely fallen out of favor in scholarly circles, as there is little hard evidence supporting this theory and largely due to the translation and availability of ancient Han Chinese sources, according to which there were five UZ tribes that lived just past their northern border. Together, they were able to field over 100,000 cavalrymen in battle. They came into conflict with the Zongnu, who were a people likely related to later Huns, Turks, and Mongols. They were defeated in battle, their king beheaded, and they were driven westwards. When they arrived in Central Asia, they pushed Iranian-speaking nomadic groups southwards. This cavalcade of nomadic invaders was too much for the Greco-Bactrian kingdom to handle, and that state collapsed under the pressure. In contrast to many of the other nomadic invading tribes who were primarily interested in pillaging, the UZ settled among the Greek and Bactrian urban inhabitants of the region, and rapidly began to adopt most aspects of local religion, culture, and language. Over the next century, one of the UZ tribes, the Kushana consolidated the confederation of Yuzi tribes and local people into one state. This process was completed by Heraeus in the first century AD, who depicted himself being crowned by Nike, the Greek god of victory, with the caption, the tyrant Heraeus of the Kushans. He was succeeded by the first Kushan emperor, Kajula, who depicted himself in a much more Greek manner on his coins. Some believe that Kajula and Heraeus were in fact the same man, with a changed public image, perhaps to appeal to the country's large Greek population that had colonized the region in the earlier centuries. In any case, after the Kushan state was internally united, it rapidly expanded into an empire during the long reigns of Kajula's son and grandson. His great-grandson, Kanishka, expanded the empire to its greatest extent, successfully campaigning several times in the Tarim Basin and conquering most of northern India. According to the Rabatak inscription, during Kanishka's reign, the official state language was changed from Greek to Bactrian, the native language of what is now northern Afghanistan, which was modified to be used with the Greek written script. Although this language was used for official purposes, it is unclear what language the Kushan elite spoke among themselves. There are several theories, but there is no clear or conclusive evidence to point which type of language was their native tongue. The Kushans embraced and officially promoted a wide variety of religious practices, including but not limited to the ancient Greek cults, particularly the veneration of Zeus, Nike and Hercules, Mithraism, Zoroastrianism, Buddhism, and the Hindu gods Shiva and Kumara, the god of war. Sometime during Kanishka's reign, he converted to Buddhism, and he became an ardent patron of Greco-Buddhist art, architecture, monks, and missionaries. Kanishka built a giant Buddhist shrine known as a stupa that was several hundred feet high and covered in gemstones. It was considered a wonder of the age, and attracted pilgrims from as far away as China. Kanishka's reign was regarded as the beginning of a new era, with later Kushan emperors counting the first year of his reign as year one on their calendar. During the reigns of Kanishka's immediate successors, the empire appears to have enjoyed a period of stable consolidation 
and relative peace and prosperity in the marketplaces of the Kushan Empire's great cities. Manufactured products and luxury goods from China to Rome, India, and Africa could be found. Chinese visitors were amazed at the level of wealth and sophistication that their old nomadic northern neighbor had established themselves in in this very different part of the world. Vasudeva was the last great Kushan king and the only one named after a Hindu god. During his reign, several international events unfolded that would prove disastrous for the Kushan Empire. First was the collapse of the Han Empire, and the beginning of the Three Kingdoms period of Chinese history. The Chinese military presence that secured much of the trade along the Silk Road disappeared, and most if not all trade with China was cut off. To the west, the Arsacid Parthians were overthrown by the Sassanid Persians, who were a much more aggressive and expansionist empire. For 40 years, Vasudeva fought to keep his empire suffering from economic collapse together, which he was somewhat successful in doing. However, it fell apart shortly after his death. The Kushans fell into infighting, with multiple claimants to the throne. Their fractured armies were easily swept aside by the Sassanid Persians, with most of their empire being conquered by 240 AD, leaving the remnant of the empire's territory in the Indian subcontinent vulnerable to conquest by the Gupta Empire. The Persians realized that despite the Kushan's recent run of misfortune, they had conquered a well-running economic machine. So despite changing the ruling dynasty to one much more friendly to itself, the new Kushan Shahs were granted near-autonomous status which gradually eroded over time, but very little would have changed in regular people's lives. The realm of the Kushan Shahs lasted for over a century, and it came to an end in the same manner that the Kushan Empire was born, through nomadic invasions. Waves of Zeonites, Kitarites, Huns, and Hephthalites poured in. Some of them assimilated to some degree, but the land became the battleground for warlords for generations, before the Sasanian Persians reconquered it, and fully incorporated the region into the rest of their empire. I would like to take a moment to thank this video's sponsor, Squarespace. Whether it is podcasting, a personal website, or online store, Squarespace has the easy-to-use tools to support your creativity, including loads of customizable design templates, seamless blogging, podcast, and social media integration and support, access to a vast library of high-quality Yeti images, email campaigns and mailing lists are easy to set up, so you can keep in touch with your customers or community. And with integrated analytics, you can quickly find all the important stats for your website. With all of this in mind, I highly recommend you use Squarespace for whatever kind of website you can think of. Whether it's for school, work, or just for fun, check out squarespace.com and register for a free trial using squarespace.com forward slash Epimetheus. When you're ready to launch the website you created, Use offer code Epimetheus to get a 10% discount on your first website or domain purchase. This has been Epimetheus, and a big thanks to my patrons over on Patreon. And don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notifications every time I make a new video like this.